Welcome everybody to today's webinar, Creating a Killer Publicity Strategy with Online News Releases. Uh, I'm your moderator, Jian Wei from PR Web. And at PR Web, we think about the news release in a number of different ways. We think about it as a tool that can drive traffic back to your website. Uh, we think about it as a tool that can help build your authority online so that you rank better in search engines. One thing that we sometimes lose sight of is its role as a tool to create publicity by getting the attention of journalists and bloggers and in that process helping connect our customers with them so that they can write stories that are then communicated to an even broader audience. And it's interesting because the news release is an evolution of a tool, the press release, that was originally all about this. It was all about publicity. It was all about getting to the influencer and the newsmaker and trying to compel them to write a story. And so what we're here today to talk about is the value of publicity. And we're here to kind of get back to the roots of the tool and understand uh, how it is a tool to generate publicity. And consider that in a broader scope of how online news releases can be leveraged um, and allow us to accomplish all our top line goals of creating traffic, creating search visibility, and our underlying goal of connecting with key audiences. Uh, so that is what today is about. A bit about the content of today. Uh, the first 40 minutes are going to be devoted to presentation from our two speakers. During this time, as you have questions, uh, please feel free to ask them through the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. We're going to be answering some questions during the webinar and others that we see appear with a great degree of frequency. We're going to be setting those aside and we have 20 minutes at the end of today's presentation reserved just for Q&A. Uh, if you're an active Twitter user, we'll, we will be organizing our Twitter conversation using the hashtag PRWeb um, that you should be able to see as well. And after the webinar, you will be directed to a brief questionnaire. So if you have a few minutes, we'd love to get your feedback. Um, we will also be sending you a PDF afterwards with today's slides, as well as a link to the archived recording, um, an ebook and the winners of our Big Book Giveaway. We're going to be giving out three complimentary copies um, of Janet's book, who's one of our speakers, at the, uh, at the end of today's webinar. Um, during the presentation, if you want to download the slides, you should see a link that should read Download Slides at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and if you need any technical assistance, please click the Help tab at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So I'm going to move on and introduce our speakers for today. Our first speaker is going to be Bill Stoller, who's the publisher and editor of Publicity Insider. Bill has spent over 27 years as one of America's top publicists, including stints with top PR firms Conan Wolf, Burson Marsteller, past 15 years with his own agency, Stoller and Bard Communications. He has provided PR counsel and implemented publicity programs for brands such as Colgate Palmolive, Hasbro, 20th Century Fox, and Coca-Cola. Our second speaker for today is going to be Janet Miners Thaler, author of I Need a Killer Press Release, Now What? She's a professional writer and a blogger whose work has been published in both offline and online magazines, including City Search. She's presented to business owners and the PRSA and has worked as a tech marketer, a web marketing manager, a brand manager, and strategy coordinator. Um, she is also the winner of the 2009 Social Media Content Guru Award given out by the Social Media Club, and she blogs at newspapergirl.com. At the end of today's presentation, we're going to be showing you links to both of these uh, speakers' websites and blogs, uh, so you should definitely follow up with them. But first, we're going to uh, get into our presentation, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Bill. Okay. Thank you, every everybody. Welcome. Uh, good, to, uh, good to be presenting in front of everybody. So let's get right to it because we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So we're going to be talking right now about the timing, the timing of your publicity, the timing of your press release. Okay. So if you, mo if you like most publicity seekers, you probably think one project at a time. You've got a new product coming out in April, so you send out a press release in March. You've hired a new executive. You put out a release when that executive is on board. 
For hardcore publicity insiders, though, there's a rhythm to generating coverage based on the natural ebb and flow of the seasons. Such an approach can help you score publicity throughout the year and will keep your eye on the ball from January through December. Okay? Uh, essentially, a year-long approach consists of two strategies. Timing your existing stories, new product introductions, oddball promotions, business page features, etc., to fit the, fit the needs of the media or your consumers during particular times of the year. Uh, you have to craft new stories to take advantage of the events, holidays, and seasonal activities. Uh, before we run through the four seasons of publicity, a few words about lead time. In the age of immediacy, only a few seconds separate a Matt Drudge or a CNN from writing a story and putting it before millions. It's easy to forget that. For many print publications, TV shows, uh, magazines, it can be weeks and sometimes months before a completed story sees the light of day. Even online, uh, these stories have, sometimes have to be uh, produced, especially if it's for a print publication, before it hits their dot-com version, it has to be produced months in advance. The phrase lead time simply refers to the amount of time needed for a journalist uh, to complete a story for a particular issue of a magazine, episode of a TV news program, etc. cetera. Um, example, a freelancer for an entertainment magazine may need to turn a story in on Christmas movies by September 15th. Lead time of three months. Time needed for the editor to review and change the piece, the issue to be uh, to be printed, uh, distributors to be uh, to sent out on newsstands, et cetera, et cetera. And even after that, when it hits the, the dot com again, uh, these things have to be looked at way in advance. Uh, lead times can be ranged from a, from a day, uh, or even seconds or minutes if it's on Twitter or blogs, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to a few days for newspaper features, whatever actually newspapers are left, uh, to a few weeks weekly magazines to many months. Uh, the longest lead times uh, are the domain of the women's books, such as uh, Good Housekeeping, Better Homes and Gardens, etc. Those publications have a lead time of up to six months, which means they may actually need their information for Christmas issues as early as May. So you may actually be working on your press releases in March and April to get all your information out, send it out in May to get to, get to them, um, and they may contact you a month or two later, and then that thing's not even going to show up until December. Okay. Here's a, a, a tip on how to discover the lead time of uh, particular publications that, you, that you're targeting. Yeah, you can call the advertising department, but uh, what, uh, if you, all you have to do is just go online, uh, go to the uh, publication you're interested in, and usually uh, in their advertising section they'll have an editorial calendar. Uh, the editorial calendar will be almost like a guide telling you when the publication is coming out and when their lead time is for submissions. Uh, or you can uh, uh, save yourself a lot of time. You can go to myedcals, M-Y-E-D-C-A-L-S dot com, uh, and they have a service for you. Also, uh, Vocus PR Web, uh, as part of uh, their services, also has uh, editorial calendars. Okay. Okay. One uh, one extra bonus here that I have for you uh, is uh, an area called AP Special Sections, Associated Press. In the Associated Press, in their offices in New York, there is one woman who is one of the most powerful people out there named Julia Rubin, uh, and she has these special sections that have uh, about two, three, two to three month lead times in which they have a particular topic, and within those topics, um, they go out to 1,500 newspapers, websites, online, radio, et cetera, et cetera. If she, cha if she chooses your product to be part of her uh, special edition, uh, you're going to be getting uh, clip after clip after clip, mention online, et cetera. It's just going to go wild. So I, I gave you an, uh, an idea on the deadlines there. So you can see right there in taxes. Taxes, obviously, isn't going to be happening for, for quite a few months, but their deadline is... 1101. So that gives you an idea on how lead times work. Plus, also, you get a really, really nice contact there. Don't overdo it with her, but uh, it gives you a really nice lead time. Okay. The four seasons of publicity. Okay. Now, this is just, uh, again, an idea on the timing of your, uh, of your press releases and your publicity, your pitch letters, um, for a full year. First quarter, March, uh, January through March, uh, what's the media covering? Uh, early in the year, the media is looking ahead. It's a great time to pitch trend stories, marketplace predictions, previews of things to expect in the year ahead. For instance, uh, if a new president is being inaugurated, you'll see a lots, of, lots of will the new administration be good for the 
textile, film, cattle, whatever industry uh, types of pieces. It's a good time to have something provocative or even controversial to say about your industry. Media also likes this time of year to run and get your personal house in order uh, sorts of pieces, uh, tax planning, home organizing, weight loss, anything that's geared towards helping people uh, keep their New Year's resolutions can also work here. And I have a list of the key days and events. Time your publicity around those events. Again, go back to the section before where I was talking about uh, when each type of media is looking for, uh, for, uh, for this information. Um, Second quarter, April through June, uh, with the media is covering. It's an anything goes time of year. With no major holidays or huge events, April is a good time to try some of your general stories, business features, new product stuff, light fun stories work here. Uh, as a sense of spring fever takes hold of newsrooms, uh, uh, journalists are human. Uh, they're just as happy. Winter is over as you are, and it's often reflecting the kind of stories they choose to run. As May rolls around, thoughts turn to summer. Uh, now they're looking for summer vacation pieces, outdoor toys, gadgets, stories about safety, uh, whether autom automotive, recreational, leisure activities, things to do for kids, and so on. Uh, and there's your, your key days and events. Uh, moving on to the third quarter, July through September, the dog days of summer are when smart publicity seekers really uh, make hay. Folks at PR firms are on vacation. Marketing budgets are being conserved for the holidays, and reporters are suddenly accessible and open to all kinds of things. It's a good time to get to work with creative fun angles. Entertainment theme pieces do well in the summer. Anything with celebrity works, lighter business stories, new product trend pieces, technology news, back-to-school education themed articles, and you name it. Uh, reporters are also uh, get, are about to get deluged once again come September, so use this window of opportunity wisely. There's the key date. And now we're moving over to the fourth quarter. What the media is covering. This is the busiest time of the media calendar. The fourth quarter is when the business media turns serious and lifestyle media thinks holidays, holidays, holidays. Business angles need to be hard news. Fluffy trend pieces won't cut it as much and business editors begin to take stock of the state of the economy and the market. It's a tough time to put out a new product release. Uh, for the non-business media, think Christmas, Christmas travel, Christmas gifts, Christmas cooking, whatever. If a product or service that can be given as a holiday gift, get on the stick early. And by stick, I mean the computer. <laughs> Nail down lead times for the publications you're targeting. Call to find out who's handling the holiday gift review article and get your product in the, person's, in the right person's hand in plenty of time, uh, along with a pitch letter or a press release that makes a strong case about how, uh, how, a novel, how novel or unusual your essential gift about product is. Uh, after Christmas, you have a brief window of time for the best of the year, worst of the year, and we're in review pieces. Be creative. The media loves these things. And there's the, um, the key dates and events. All right. And again, I just want to give you a focus. I'm not going to read all these for, for you. You'll be able to have these slides later. But this basically gives you uh, the ability to uh, time your publicity events to upcoming seasonal events. and. Uh, this is what people should be working on right now as we speak. Okay, people with the short leave stuff uh, should be working on the November stuff, uh, December, January, and so far and so forth. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the Ten Commandments of Press Releases. Oh, sorry, that's, uh, that's really, really bad Charlton Heston here. But uh, every press release you write is different. But regardless of its content, you have to make sure each release you write conforms to these ten commandments of press releases, all right? Okay, so everybody on one, thou shalt be professional. When you write your press release, no goofy fonts, insipid clip art, silly gimmicks. Even lighthearted press releases need to represent a communication between one professional and another, a company and its customers, okay? Thou shalt not be promotional or think like an advertiser. The more you remind the media or your customers that you're sending your press releases out to that you're a commercial entity seeking promotional exposure, the less chance you have. Blatant ad copy, excessive use of trademark symbols, overblown quotes, puffed up claims and other techniques better suited for advertising copy 
are sure ways to assure, assure that your release gets trashed, that no one sees it. You must think like an objective journalist and have a sense of perspective about who you are and what you sell and communicate that in your materials. If you can't do that, chances are you've gotten too close to your product. If you spend all day eating, breathing, and sleeping packing tape, it's easy to start believing that the slight change you made in the thickness of your company's new packing tape is an advance on par with the printing press and the polio vaccine. Okay? So uh, if you can't get objective distance from your company to write a press release that's not filled with hyperpuffery, hire someone else to do it. Thou, not, thou, thou shalt not be boring. Even the driest subject matter allows for some sparks of creativity. Journalists and your customers like knowing that there's a human being communicating with them, not some corporate robot. Thou, sh thou shalt be brief. Learn to cut out extraneous words. Keep your sentences short. Include only the points necessary to sell the story. The well-crafted one-page press release is a thing of beauty. Thou shalt know thy recipient. A feature or specialty editor is a very different creature from a city desk editor or your customers. If you're promoting the opening of a new winery, the food and wine editor may be interested in all the details about what's, what kind of aging process and wine press you're using. The city desk editor just wants to know when the grand opening is and what's going to, going to happen there. Your customers might be interested in store hours, tours, and tasting parties. Thou shalt use the proper tense. When writing a hard news release, a contract signing, a stock split, a major announcement, use the past tense. For instance, Acme Industry has changed its name to Acme Co., the company announced today. When writing a soft news release, you know, a trend story, a personal profile, use the present tense. Jane Smith is one of the best marathon runners over 14. She's also blind. Thanks to new technology from Acme Co., Jane is able to, you get the idea. Thou shalt vi think vis vis visually. Press release is more than words. It's a visual document that, can be f that will be first assessed by how it looks. I'm, I'm referring to more than just font size. I'm, turn I'm, uh, I'm referring to the actual layout of the words. Um, Big blocks of text and long paragraphs are daunting and uninviting. Short paragraphs and sentences make for a much more visually inviting look. There's just this little psychology there. Okay? So uh, thou shalt tell a story. How to arrange the facts on a hard news release is pretty much cut and dry. The old who, what, when, where, and how lead and inverted pyramid concepts still hold. We don't have enough time for me to go into the, uh, the, the inverted pyramid concepts, so I would recommend you go to www.pointer.org, pointer.org, uh, and uh, search for inverted pyramid. They have a great idea. They, 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 they discuss it beautifully for you. Okay? So let's focus on the soft news release, a trend story, the feel-good company story, the gee whiz, I didn't know anything, anyone was doing that release. The difference between these releases and a hard news release is simply a mirror of the difference between a feature story in, say, the entertainment section of your newspaper and a breaking news story on page one. The hard news story is about cold, hard facts, a mudslide closed portions of Interstate 70 last night causing massive delays, a feature article about a guy who spends all day looking at seismograph readouts trying to predict where the next mudslide will occur will be very different. Like it would be in present tense, it won't load up all the facts up front and will be designed to draw the reader deep into the text. It is, in short, all about storytelling. Okay, number nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness. I'll repeat. Thou shalt not bear false witness. This may seem an obvious point, but it always, always bears repeating. There you go. Tell the truth. There may be worse people to lie to than journalists, detectives, IRS agents, the guy who's administering your lie detector test, but not many. Think about it. These men and women are trained to discover the truth. They know how to do research and how to talk to others in your field to, turn, to determine whether or not you're being truthful. They're walking BS detectors. Don't take, any, don't take chances. Don't even think about inflating your sales numbers or making up a story or pitching something that's mostly BS. Not only will they figure it out, your attempts to bamboozle them will even make it into the press. It's a chance not worth taking. Make sure every release you write is honest and on the level, especially in these days of social media, because if you make a mistake and you're outed for it and you lie, it will reverberate for decades. Thou shalt know, thou shalt know thy limitations. Not everyone can write a press release. It's a, 
A good feature release in particular isn't an easy thing to craft. If you don't feel like you have the chops to get the, word, the job done, hire a professional. Two final tips. Right before you start writing your release, spend an hour or two reading your daily newspaper or whatever is left of those daily newspapers. Pay special attention to stories that you see similar and feel to yours. Immerse yourself in how the pros do it, and you'll be in the right frame of mind to tackle the job. And the final tip is, uh, on Twitter, if you follow at PRWeb on Twitter, at PRWeb on Twitter, uh, that, and that's, I think that's Gian's, our host, uh, they regularly send a most read on PR Web tweet. Basically, it's, it's the most popular uh, press release that PR Web has had in the last few days. Read the press release, learn, learn. Okay? I'm going to move this along. I know we're running out of time. Uh, the Publicity Secrets Cookbook. Okay. I've been doing pu publicity for quite a long time, about 27 years. Uh, and I know in an ideal world, uh, your business will be flow, overflowing with newsworthy stories, and the media will be waiting with bated breath uh, for your next press release, or ready to give you front page coverage. In the real world, however, it's not so easy to generate real news. There's only so many hot new topics of, or breakthrough achievements in which a business can capture a journalist's attention. So how do the top publicists, PR people do to get news coverage, okay? So here's a peek inside. This is my personal cookbook of ideas and tactics that I used to grab publicity even the quietest times. No charge. Start a Hall of Fame. For your field, create a Hall of Fame, induct some of your industry's top luminaries, send out a press release. You don't need a marble columned building or bronze plaques. A simple press release, maybe a supporting website, uh, will do the trick. And this thing will go on and on each year, induct some more members, and send out another press release. It's that simple. Listen, PR Web is a powerful tool, and what I'm seeing is people are getting stuck doing the same type of press releases over and over. There's a world of ideas, a world of publicity ideas that you can use more and more, and the more you get out there that's newsworthy, the more it's going to help your business. Listen, on, a, on the Hall of Fame thing, a quick story I did. Uh, if anyone remembers Benny King, raise your hands. Okay. Uh, he's the guy who wrote, uh, who sung Stand By Me in Spanish Harlem. I worked with him for a while, and we created a Beach Music Hall of Fame. Again, no brick and mortar. This was just a, a publicist uh, Hall of Fame, uh, and my grand achievement was watching him talk about it on David Letterman. Make a list. Uh, anyone remember uh, Mr. Blackwell? Uh, he was the guy who came out every year with a snarky little uh, worst dress list, and it was, it was very, very uh, popular. Uh, There's also the most boring people list. Uh, these guys are just working almost practically out of the homes who have made little cottage, cottage industries of making a list. The media devours lists, the best, the worst, the most, the least, the top ten, the bottom ten, whatever. Is there actual news here? Not really but it's entertaining, fluffy, and a bit gossipy, especially with social media now. People just live for this stuff. Uh, lists are perfect fodder for an editor so you can balance out all the higher and status of a typical news day with a bit, bit of levity. Um, craft an index. Here's a neat variation on the list concept. It's basically a twist on the government's cost of living index. Okay? So... Um, what we did back in my agency days, uh, one of our clients was the company that imported Moe Champagne. Along that line, uh, we, had, we brainstormed the Moe, Moe Index. It was basically a list of some luxury items, such thing as the Maine Lobster, a jar of Russian caviar, diamond bracelet, etc., et et and, of course, a bottle of Moe, with the total cost of the odd, odd items if one were to purchase them. The number was compared with the amount they would have cost last year and the year before, and voila. The MOE index was born. This thing goes on for year and year. I mean, it is a publicity bonanza. Charity tie-ins hold a fundraiser, make a donation for each sale of a particular item, host a walkathon, sponsor someone who's, going, who's doing something unusual for charity, create a product specifically to sell as a fund, fundraiser. Charity tie-ins are a staple of the news business. Be creative. Try and find a charity that's relatable to your business. Um, keep it fun, light. Hold a thon, not a thong, a thon. The media loves marathon events. How many articles do you see whenever a car dealer holds one of those events in which people have to touch a car for 48 hours in order to win it, or when a radio DJ sleeps in a billboard until the local sports team wins the game, the wackier the better, and, of course, the charity tie-in is always good. All of these things, press release, press release, press release. 
Go on a crusade. Local uh, school districts cutting funds for after-school programs. You go on a personal crusade to raise the money needed to keep them going. Look, these are small local ideas, but you can make these all national, the charity tie-ins, the fun, the crusades. How's another one? The largest. The media can't resist this. The largest chocolate chip cookie, you've all seen this stuff. The largest ball of string, the largest train set, it doesn't matter as long as it's visual. Food is a particularly good one because it offers good visuals during the creation of the world's largest, well, let's say, it, omelet, uh, and good visuals afterwards while the omelet is being consumed by the throng of viewers. Uh, plus, you can charge for a plate of omelet, which brings a charity fundraising aspect into play. I mean, this stuff goes, I can do this forever. Here's another one, the most people. Every year in Seattle, organizers try and break their own record for most guitarists playing uh, Louie Luai. You know, Louie Luai. And they're up to about 3,500. Each year, the media covers the event. National media covers this event. It goes online. Twitter covers it. Uh, goes, the Flickr fo uh, photos go on there. I mean, it just goes on and on. The beauty of publicity now is, yes, Mainstream media is shrinking, but it's just being taken place by another type of uh, another form of media. The rules of engagement are the same. Uh, pub publicity and publicists and, and, and the ability for small businesses uh, to get the word out has never been better. You've got to take advantage of this. The fact that you even have a PR web out there, or that you have a Harrow out there, I mean, it's, they're, they're, putting it in, in, uh, they're putting it in your lap. Okay, a couple quick ones. Celebrate a hero. Almost any community in America has sent young uh, men and women to uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc. Honor the service by dedicating a portion of your store, office, or website to them. Invite your customers to send messages and care packages to them. Huh? Do something meaningful for their families. Raise money to buy them armor. Uh, host a carnival for their children. Publicly celebrate each one's return. Well, the goal is to get publicity. I hope you recognize the difference between the, uh, this entry and, say, creating the world's largest omelets. This is serious business. It should be done from the heart or not at all. Uh, if you host a carnival for the family of soldiers and you don't get a single news story, that should be utterly irrelevant. Bring families together. It's another one. Star Trek conventions, comic book festivals, motorcycle rallies, etc. Do your customers share a common passion that lends itself to a get-together? If so, start your own convention. This stuff works, folks. Okay. I got to move on. Keep the publicity flowing for free. Okay. Here uh, is my personal list of places that I go to. Okay, I don't know everything. I've been I've been in this business 27 years, man, and every day I learn something new uh, because there's just a lot of smart people out there. And the fact that you have this internet and online, you can keep updated with all this stuff coming. And this is my personal. Uh, golden list of places that I go to, okay? So I'll do it really quickly. So for instance, Wooden Horse uh, Pubs, that gives you information on how to, uh, on what the new magazines are out, what's dying, what's living, what's doing well, etc. How I mentioned that before, it's how, for, the, for those few people who haven't uh, uh, subscribed to how help a reporter out uh, is amazing. Uh, it allows you to hear what reporters are looking for, and you respond to that, and boom, you got publicity. Uh, another version of that also is pitchrate.com. With all of the uh, people who are blogging and the number gets bigger, uh, if you go to this pr.alltop, that is a directory of all the publicity and PR bloggers all in one place, so you don't have to constantly be looking and seeing. You just go there every once in a while, and you know, you're going to get updated. Journalist tweets, journalisted, muckrake, media on Twitter, uh, et cetera, et cetera, are, um, are all the ways you can find out what journalists are writing about, what they're tweeting about, et cetera, et cetera. Look at the rest of this list. Uh, there's the people who I tweet about. Look at the rest of this list. Learn it. Enjoy it. Uh, it's there for you. Listen, it's been my absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, please, when you get a chance, uh, if you uh, – Check out my newsletter, all this information that I have. It's called Free Publicity, the newsletter for PR Hungry Businesses, um, and I invite everyone to, to discover it. So I would, at this time, I'd like to, uh, to pass uh, the teleseminar, the, excuse me, the webinar, over to Janet. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, and hello, everybody. It's great to be here with Bill, and thanks to PR Web for putting this together. Let's go right into how to create a killer press release. First, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the trends that are going on right now. My favorite tool to find trends is to use Google Insights for search. Uh, in my slide, you can see that I look for news 
and I can see what's hot right now. And so just to give you an idea, of course the holidays are really hot. If I searched on Christmas, I saw Christmas recipes, Christmas cookies, um, Christmas music, things like that are really popular right now. Also, um, the economy is really hot. There's a lot of searches for layoffs and people looking for jobs. And already, even though it's not Christmas yet, there's a lot of searches for after Christmas sales. So use this tool, and you can search by industry or by keyword to find out what's hot in your industry right now, and those are great topics to use in a press release. Another thing that you also should pay attention to is at the bottom, on the right-hand side, after you do a search, it'll show you the rising searches, and these are particularly hot right now. And so you can look for those um, and go ahead and use those exact terms right in the headline of your press release. Capitalizing on what's hot right now is a great way to generate publicity. All right, so those are some of the trends. And let me just go into my list, and that's the top five mistakes to make to, when creating an online news release. One of the first mistakes that I see is that people don't use keyword links. A lot of people do use links in their press releases, and they understand that that's powerful, but I don't see them being keyword links. And what I mean by that is making certain important words in your press release into links that go to a related page of your website or a blog post or other content online. So let me show you an example. Here's a, a press release that I found on PR Web for an HD multimedia player. And that, I did some keyword research and found out people are searching for that exact term, HD multimedia player. In this particular press release at the bottom, you can see that they did direct you to their home page, and that's a good practice. But they could also make the words HD multimedia player or some variation of that into a link that goes directly to their product page that has that multimedia media player on it. You'll notice that this, um, there's about 13 um, million, I think it is, other web pages that come up for the term. And if they use that term as, link, as a link and use it probably in their headline, that will help them gradually increase their chances of coming up higher on the, li on the list when someone does a search for that term. The next mistake that I see a lot is the no call to action. What do you want people to do once they've read your great news? I like to conclude each press release with a call to action. It could be something like go to my website to see my new holiday collection, subscribe to our newsletter, become a fan of our business on Facebook, or other, uh, other actions you'd like them to take. So here's an example. This press release talks about how Despite the bad economy and all these people getting laid off, this company is still hiring people. And that's great news, um, but I looked at the press release and there's no call to action. And what I mean by that is at the bottom or somewhere in the press release, they should invite people to go and look at the jobs that are available right now on their website. And so it could say something like, search for a graphic design job now at, and then they could put www.logoloft.com slash careers.html. And again, that's their actual page that lists their jobs available. And notice I take them right to that page and not to just the home page. Mistake number three, that people don't use pictures or video in their press releases. If you choose the $200 level uh, PR web, you can put a picture right into your press release. And at $360 level, you can actually embed a video right into the press release. And the reason I like pictures and video so much is they help to tell your story in, in other ways and also informs and builds trust with your readers. And additionally, it gives you another chance to use your keyword phrases so it can help you come up higher in search engines for those phrases. Here's a study. And it talks about how just adding a video to your press release can really help your ranking. And and I found that to be true. So keep in mind that you want to use those and those videos and those images to help tell your story and to make it stronger. And then mistake number four is that there are no captions in your pictures. Let me show you an example of this one. 
here's an example of actually someone who has put a caption. Uh, in eye, track, eye tracking studies, it's been shown that people's eyes are drawn to the image and then right underneath the image. So those words underneath an image are really vital words. Um, in this one, I really like this press release because it actually uses a strong image that has a call to action right in it. It says affiliates to vote now. And then right under the image, it says vote now. And so it has a call to action right there in the caption. And they could also say, you know, make that even stronger by saying vote um, what it's for and actually maybe even a, a link or an URL to go ahead and vote to the vote page itself. And then, so mistake number five is not putting quotes in your press release. And quotes are really powerful. It's a way that you can use the first person and to sell your story even stronger. Um, in this, you can talk directly to your audience and you can tell them some of the most important points of your news so they'll be intrigued and want to keep reading. Um, your quotes should back up the main points of your press release. Avoid using words like, um, we're so excited to announce, but instead tell why you're excited. And this, this is a good test. If you can read through the quote and kind of get an idea of who the, person, who the business is and what the main, main, one of the main points is, then you're doing well. But if you read it and it could just apply to almost any business out there, then you probably need to rewrite that quote. And at the $200 price point on Pierre Webb, you can use a pullout quote. And I have an example of that in this press release. Um, that way, you can actually add an extra emphasis to the quote. And again, people's eyes are drawn to this part of your press release. So you should definitely use this picture, this feature. And you notice in this quote that it actually says something, it has a third-party endorsement, and it tells exactly what the product is. So it's a tool for Internet marketing research. And I can see that right in the quote. So immediately, even if I didn't read the headline, my eyes are drawn, and I can see what this press release is about. Okay, so here's my next list. And again, I could actually make these lists into press releases. So here's my top 10 tips for writing a killer press release. Or I'm sorry, my top five. <laughs> Tip number one, you need to tell your readers how to connect with you online. So in this press release, at the bottom after the About Us section, actually after the press contact, um, they put how to talk, contact them on Twitter and also their blog. So go ahead and co incorporate your social sites right into your press release. A lot of times people do want to connect with you, so give them a chance to make it and make it easier for them by giving them your URL to your blog, your Twitter account, your Facebook fan page, your LinkedIn profile, etc. And tip number two is don't be a one-hit wonder. I've seen a lot of people send out one press release and put all of their efforts into that one press release hoping that it pays off. And that's really not a good way to approach it. With PR web and, and online press releases, consistency really does pay off. It builds up trust with readers and also in search engines. Um, and I, let me give you an example of one of my clients. We sent out a press release once a month for many, several months and they saw some higher rankings in the press release for their keywords, but they weren't getting actual sales from their press releases or they, wouldn't, they weren't getting much response. And it was eight months after sending out one press release a month when they started getting the phone ringing. And that's when they started seeing the, the effect of that lift in search engines, that people were finding them and contacting them. So plan to send out a press release probably every month if you can. Don't make up press releases or news just to get up, just to do that. But also, one caveat is to not overdo it. I've also seen lower results with people sending out too many press releases just for the search results, and they really don't have any good news to share. So be consistent, but don't send out too many. Tip number three is write for the web. Oops. Um, when I say that, remember that when people are reading online, they're often multitasking and they skim information. Bill talked a little bit about this, how you want to use short sentences, you want to use shorter paragraphs, you want to make it easy for people to read quickly. Um, one tip is from Jacob Nielsen, who's a usability expert, is you want to 
ignore AP style in this case, and instead of writing out numbers, actually just put the numerals. Because people's eyes can read a number a lot faster than they can uh, read it spelled out. It also alerts people that you're giving them a fact when they see a number. So use numbers. Um, the next thing is after you've sent out that press release and you have done, you know, made it a killer one, now it's your chance to promote it. So once it's live, now you can get the even more exposure. The first thing I would say is if you have a blog, go ahead and write about the news in the casual style and then link to your press release with your keyword phrases. And if you don't have a blog, perhaps you can contact a blogger that has an audience that would be interested in the news and you can do a guest post or ask them to post about it. Another thing you want to do is let people know on Twitter. Ideally, you want to link to a blog post and not to the press release itself because a lot of people will think that a press release is too promotional and it's like an ad. So I like to instead link to a blog post about the news with that then links to the press release. You can also ask your friends or your network to send a tweet to their followers. Um, and if you want to, you can use services like sponsored tweets to actually pay people who have huge followings that might be interested in the news to tweet that out. Um, some other tips, you can send it out in your email newsletter. Be sure to put an update on your fan page on Facebook and link to the press release or to the blog post. Also, you can bookmark it on social bookmarking websites like Dig and um, on Delicious and other things like that. And if it's a professional release, of course, you can also put it on LinkedIn. You can put the actual press release or just link to it in your status update. I have a lot of suggestions and tools like this in my book. I need a killer press release, now what? And so you can go over and get some more good ideas. And my last tip, tip number five, is to come up with a good cause. Sometimes you have to be creative, like we've talked about, to come up